Well, good morning, Severn Run. Oh, now, come on. I know you're just now sitting down and everything, but I'm going to just try it one more time. Good morning, Severn Run. That's what I like. A little bit more energy. That's good. Now, here's the whole thing. This is one of those confusing Sundays because do we say Merry Christmas or do we say Happy New Year? Uh, how many? Somebody, somebody's trying to get away with Happy Holidays out there. Here, here's my question. How many of you, you're still, you're still saying Merry Christmas? Got some holdouts, some Christmas holdouts. How many of you are Happy New Year's? From what I can tell, there ain't nobody excited about either one much. <laughs> now, do we need to get up and do jumping jacks and everything to kind of get going yet this morning? or uh, Well, to help both sides out, I'll say happy. I'll say, what will I say? Happy. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. We did it. Folks, do me a favor. I'm serious about this right now. Stand up. Just stand up real quick. Just do it. Just make it happen. Just stand up. You can do it. You can do it. Now sit back down quick. <laughs> do you feel what's happening right now? That's called a heartbeat. I just want to make sure you had one real quick. So um, here's the thing. I'm just going to go ahead and like lead with the, 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 the story, and I'm going to give it all away to start with. And here it is. Life is limited. Life is limited when you're only looking on the out, when you're only looking on the outside. Life is limitless when you're looking from the inside out. I'm going to say it one more time, and I want you to just like let it sink in for a second. Life is limited when you're only looking on the outside. Life is limitless when you're looking from the inside out. And at that point, at this point, we're done. You can go home, enjoy the new year. I knew there would be one. I just wanted to see who it was. In fact, I was just waiting for somebody to actually get up and walk out. The good thing about being in the circle is we can see you. And we will judge you if you walk out uh, a little bit too early. Life is limited when you're only looking on the outside. Life is limitless when you're looking from the inside out. We got done with our family vacation this year. We go down every year to Virginia Beach. We do it because it's cheap. The reason why it's cheap is because my brother and, brother-in-law and sister-in-law live down there. They live like three blocks away from the beach. We go down there, we park, and we can just stay there the rest of the week, never even have to get back in the car. It's awesome, it's amazing, it's fun, it's wonderful. And then we came back. And here was the thing, though. While we were there and we were gone to the beach, you know how it is when you go on vacation, you budget a certain amount of money to spend. I don't know. Anybody like that? Is everybody in here a multimillionaire? I'm the only one that's not. <laughs> do you guys know what I'm talking about? Give me a head shake if you do. You budget a certain amount of money in order to be there, and then, uh, and then when you run out, you run out. Well, on this particular year, um, this last year, we were having such a good time. We were about like three-fourths of the way through the beach vacation, and there was a couple of other things that we wanted to do. And I said, let's just go do them. Meanwhile, we'd already run out of the money. I didn't tell my wife. Anybody ever? Anybody? Anybody ever run out of money and you didn't quite tell the, the spouse? I, I didn't tell my wife, and, and, and we came home, and what I didn't tell her was where I got the extra money from. She just thought we were using the money that was budgeted. I'd kind of gotten the extra money from the back-to-school fund. Oh. Oh. oh, listen to the judgment. <laughs> As if you've never done anything like that before. I kind of got the money from the back-to-school fund, but we had a good time. But again, I didn't tell her. And so I knew that that weekend we were going to be going back to school shopping and that Houston, we had a problem. So when you got that kind of problem, there is only one thing that you can do, and that's called talk to Jesus. I said, Jesus, you know I got a problem. Um, and he was like, yeah, you didn't tell your wife. I said, no, Jesus, that ain't my problem. What I need you to do is just give me money and solve the problem. So we were talking, and then I got, I got this text. And I found out from somebody at my wife's work that she was winning kind of this special award. And they were all excited to tell me about it that, and told, told me to keep it a secret. And that with this award also came some financial award. I was like, score. <laughs> going to have the money that she's never going to know. It's going to be amazing. 
So, meanwhile, the next morning, my wife texted me. She got the award. She said, by the way, I know, some, I know you already knew about it, and by the way, there was no financial award that goes with it. <sighs> uh, Jesus, I thought you were getting me out of this one. I thought you were helping me out. And I, I, I got to tell you what, like immediately what I did is I, I went back to him and I said, okay, we, something's got to give here. And I did something that I never, ever, ever do. I decided not to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it. This, I, I've talked to Jesus. This thing is going to take care of itself, and we're going to have some back-to-school shopping money. friend comes over that night. We're sitting down having dinner, and as we're having dinner, this unexpected thing happens. you got to love friends like this. They just pull out their checkbook. <laughs> they pull out their checkbook, and they start writing this check for, to give us for something that, that we'd done and that we never expected, like never wanted to ever, you know, have any money for it, but they write this check and they hand it over. And when it was all said and done, this check was three times the amount of the award that my wife thought she was going to get. Hey, can I tell you something? Most of the time, when we're looking on the outside, life is limited, isn't it? There's only an, just enough. But when we take the time to go into the inside, we find out that life is limitless, whether it's with our finances or anything else. Now, here's the thing that you're worried about right now. You're like, this is going to be a message on giving, isn't it? <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have come today. This is the one. And, and here's the thing. It's not, although this is a good time to remind you that today is the last time to give for tax-deductible purposes. But it's not a message on giving. And did you like how I just snuck that in there? Dr. Drew is going to love me. Here's the thing. It's not about giving. It's about the fact, folks, that life is limitless. Everything that we're looking for is limitless when we go to the inside. How many of you, you would like to have more love joy and peace in 2019 than you did in 2018. We even got a couple people willing to clap for it over here. <laughs> you Just stick your hand up. Let me see it. Let me see it. That's almost every person in the house. You would like more love, joy, and peace in 2019 than you had in 2018. The problem with, with that is the fact that most of us go looking for love, joy, and peace on the outside. We think that love, joy, and peace is found when everything that's going on on the outside is going our way. We think that when we get the raise, that when we get the job that we wanted, that when our kids finally decide to leave the house and not come back, we, we think that all of those circumstantial things are the things that give us love, joy, and peace. But they're not. And it's important that we know that. The reason why is because in 2019, there are going to be things in your life that come your direction. That if you're looking on the outside, you're not going to be able to have enough love, joy, and peace to weather them. In 2019, there will be folks that are unfortunately sitting in this room that will sit down with a doctor and you will get the report that you did not want to hear. There are unfortunately people in this room that you will sit down and you will have that meeting with your boss. And when you have that meeting with your boss, it is not going to go the way that you wanted it to go. There are folks in this room that you're going to get the phone call that you didn't want to receive, that you didn't want to hear. And the question at that point is then, will there be enough love and joy and peace? And if you're looking for your love and joy and the peace from the outside, then there will not be enough. But if you're looking to gain it from the inside, then there will be. See, most of us, we're walking around in life, and this is kind of how we operate. Uh, we've got kind of these love, joy, and peace containers that we're living in. Some of us, our love, joy, and peace container, it's only, this, it's only this big. And so when we get filled up with our love and our joy and our peace, then, then sure enough, life comes along. 
and it gets a little salty. And we get that phone call that we don't want to get, and that kind of gets poured in. And, man, it doesn't take too many teaspoons of that before you don't really want to drink out of that, do you? But our container is only so big. There's others of us that, hey, listen, our container of love and joy and peace, it's, it's a little bit bigger. We've had enough good circumstances happen in life that we've got a little room for, for error. We've got a little room for life to get salty. And so sure enough, we sit down with that doctor and we get that report and, you know, we got just enough that maybe, maybe we might consider, once it settles just a little bit, we might consider still taking a drink out of that. There's some of us that, hey, Listen, when it's all said and done, man, life's been good up until now. Things have gone our way. We got everything we wanted for Christmas. So we can handle just a little bit more salt. Life throws us a little difficulty, and you know what? We're, we can still drink out of that. By the way, I just want everybody to know for the record that this is, in fact, full, and it is this easy <laughs> for me. Uh, I've been working out a lot this year. Uh, but most of us, when it's all said and done, we're somewhere around here or here, aren't we? Life throws us a little bit of salt, and all of our love and joy and peace, it's gone. There's only one way to fix this. Because here's what I can guarantee you. Salt's coming in your direction. Isn't it? It's coming in your direction. There's no way to avoid it. What we try to do most of the time, our approach to this problem is not to increase the size of our container. Our approach to this problem is to try to keep the salt from coming at us. So what do we do? We try to control every situation that we possibly can. We try to control every move that our children make. We try to control what happens in our work environment and manipulate what's going on there. We try to control our spouse. Can I get an amen? Ladies, you've been trying to get him to put those shoes in that closet for 20 years. It hasn't worked, has it? You know why? Because we can't control anything. It's going to come at us. The only thing that we can do is increase the size of the container. And that's where the good news comes in. Because our God is a limitless God. The entire ocean cannot hold all of the love and joy and peace that he has available to you. The entire universe cannot hold it. Our God is infinite. And all that we've got to do is to spend some time with him and we can increase the love and joy and peace in our life. And then it doesn't matter how much salt life throws at us. We'll be able to deal. Does it mean that we'll like it? No. But ultimately, we'll be able to have the victory. Look what happens in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Jesus shows us exactly how to increase the size of our container. In Mark 1, 35, here's what it says. Before daybreak, the next morning, Jesus got up and he went out to an isolated place to pray. I'm going to read it one more time. Before daybreak, the next morning, Jesus got up and he went out to an isolated place to pray. That's it. Drop the mic. Walk off the stage. That's what you came here for this morning. Really? No standing ovations, no nothing. I mean, I was expecting just a little bit more than that. Come on, folks. That's some serious wisdom right there. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting that, but thank you. That's some serious wisdom right there. You want to know how to increase the container? You want to know how to have more love, joy, and peace in your life in 2019? You want to know how to make it limitless so that no matter what you face, you're going to be able to withstand it? There you go. That evening, it says, the next morning, Jesus awoke long before daybreak and went out alone into the wilderness to pray. 
didn't try to control anything, didn't try to change anything. He just decided to go out and spend some time with his heavenly father. Now, we've got a whole lot of ideas as to what that time ought to look like. I think the way that it ought to look like is that we ought to just be with Jesus. In fact, while we were talking about this, we were, we were saying that, uh, talking about this in our creative team meeting and saying, hey, how do we make this practical for people to, to grab a hold of, to like really understand what does it mean to, that Jesus just got up, he went out into an isolated place and he, and, and, and he prayed. I mean, it's got to be more complicated than that, right? It's got to be harder than that. I mean, here's the reality. We like complicated solutions. We enjoy complicated solutions. We say we want things to be simple, but in all, in, in, in all reality, we don't. We've made life here on planet Earth so unbelievably complex and complicated. And Jesus, he was looking down at all of this complication that we had created, and he came down here and he said, I just want to show you what simplicity looks like again. And so he shows us. He shows us what life ought to look like. He gets up, he goes to an isolated place, and he spends time with his father. In our creative team meeting, we were talking about how do we show this? How can we get people to kind of understand this? And immediately some ideas begin to pop up. Ideas like, well, you know what? We could provide kind of a devotional for everybody to follow the week afterwards. And we could give them this verses and we could do this and we could do that. And then I'll be honest with you, as I was preparing for this message, it just hit me. As I was reading this verse and seeing what Jesus was doing, it was like, whoa. Jesus did not take a devotional out to this isolated place. Did you hear that? Jesus' calling hadn't even been written yet. I mean, you're saying, how in the world did Jesus do a devotional time without the YouVersion app? How is that possible? Folks, he didn't even carry a copy of the Torah out with him. That would have been a really cumbersome carry at the time, the big scroll. He didn't even do that. He didn't take anything, no copy of Scripture, no devotional, no nothing. He didn't have his favorite pastor to listen to, uh, uh, you know, online. He didn't have any of that. He just went out into a quiet, isolated place and spent time with God. Are you saying that's all it takes to increase the love and the joy and the peace in my life? That's all it takes? Yeah. It really is. Will it come overnight? No. Is it a practice? Yeah. Just like it takes time to slowly but surely pour the water into any container, it'll take time to slowly but surely pour the love, the joy, the peace in your life. But there's only one way to pour it, and that's to go and to sit and to be isolated with him. Folks, this is so far away from our American mindset, isn't it? This is so far removed from how we live. Most of us in here today said we want more love, joy, and peace in the new year. My question to us then becomes this. When you look at your calendar starting tomorrow, as you get ready to proceed toward this new year and you look at the first week that will launch you into it, how does your calendar right now look any different than it did back in December? How has anything on your calendar changed from November or October or, or for that matter, last January? Does it look the exact same? Because if it looks the exact same and there is no place for this, then you're going to walk away next year with the same amount of love and joy and peace that you're currently having in your life right now. What does Jesus do? He gets up. He goes out into an isolated place, and he decides to pray, to just be quiet with his God. Here's what I want us to do. I want us to do right now what may end up being one of the most uncomfortable things that you have done in 2018. Everybody says, yay! There's always some sadistic soul in the audience. Somebody was really like, yeah, I can't wait. Let's, let's be uncomfortable. Here's what I want you to do. Right now, 
if you've got your, you know, you've got your arm over your spouse, whatever it may be, I don't even want you touching another human being. You can go back to your public displays of affection here in a moment. But don't even be touching another human being right now. I want you to just get completely still. I want you to close your eyes. And I am going to set the timer here. And for one minute, I just want you to sit there quietly. Do nothing else but listen to your breath. Time is up. For some of us, that's the most time we've spent alone, maybe ever. I mean, really spent alone. Even in that minute, how many thoughts came to your head? How many different things popped up? How many times did you get off focus? How many times did did things start to arrive or arguments that you've been having or issues that's been going on in your life began to surface? The longer that you sit there, oftentimes anxiety can come up, fears can come up, all kinds of things can come up, and then the only way that those things begin to go away is just to sit there longer. Jesus, to begin his ministry, goes out into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. That's a long time to just sit and be still. This is so far removed from who we are. But if we don't do it, then our life becomes a mess. We start looking really funny. In fact, before I came here to the church at Severn Run, I was pastoring a different church. And while I was pastoring that church, um, I would get up every morning and it was kind of in a different um, socioeconomic type of context where this church was. And uh, every morning I I would get up and I would take my kids down to school. And when I would arrive at school, um, you know, in the beginning, I just kind of noticed that, okay, that's, that's, that's different. That's a little bit odd, but, uh, but a large majority of parents would end up showing up um, in their pajamas in order to drop their children off from school. Now, here's what I already know. In this crowd right now, (laughs) hear me loud and clear. No cards, no letters. Do you understand me? They would drop their kids off in, in pajamas, and at first I was like, okay, yeah, I get it. You know, day off, like, you know, enjoy it. Get ready a little later in the day, that's fine. Then the evening would come, and I'd pick my kids up from school, and they were in the same pajamas. <laughs> Everybody needs a day in their pajamas, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Huh? Everybody needs a day in their pajamas. That's okay. No judgment until the Tuesday. <laughs> in the morning, they're in the same pajamas. I got this. Tuesday afternoon. The same pajamas. By Wednesday morning, I was judging people. I was like, take a shower already, man. That's what. You're in your pajamas right now. I had to pick on you, man. By the way, it's pajama day upstairs for the kids. So, uh, but don't let him fool you. He dresses like that all the time. 
Here's the whole thing. After a little while, honestly, you do. You start to look a, a little bit silly. People start to notice. People start to judge. Can I tell you, though, when you don't take the time, when you don't take the time to, to, to do the work on the inside, it's the same as not getting ready for work or life in the morning. People will notice over time. Oh, they may let you get away with it one morning. They may let you get away with it for a whole day. They may just look at you and say, oh, that person's just having a bad day. But over time, when you haven't taken the time to sit and to be still and to do what Jesus did, over time, it's going to catch up with you. Your family is going to notice it. Your workers are going to notice it. Everybody around you, including the people that are on the highway, are going to notice it. Because... If we don't take the time to do the work on the inside, then it will leak into everything that's taking place on the outside. Jesus gets up, and he's isolated, and he just spends time with his heavenly Father. He spends time in prayer, and then all of a sudden, in verse number 36, Peter shows up. Folks, it always gets interesting. If you're reading Scripture, whenever Peter shows up, you know something fun is about to happen because Peter didn't always have it going on upstairs. You know, Peter was kind of one French fry short of a Happy Meal oftentimes. <laughs> Peter shows up, and here's what happens. Later, Simon and others went out to find him, and when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. Jesus, what in the world are you doing? See, Peter came from this working class background of fishermen. You got up early in the morning. You got everything ready. You, you, that was the opportunity to catch those fish. That was your livelihood. You had to work hard. You had to make the most of every single minute. And Jesus is out there praying. Jesus, I thought you said, leave the fish behind. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Jesus, we got a world to save. What in the world are you doing praying? Can't you see there's a whole lot of work to be done? I mean, if, if saving people is more important than fishing, then should we be spending more time doing that, not less? I love Jesus' response. Look what happens in, in verse 38. Peter comes out there screaming and hollering and fussing. Everyone is asking for you. But he replied, we must go on to the other towns as well, and I will preach to them too, because that is why I came. He basically ignores him. He's like, whatever, it's Peter again. Talking. Peter's talking. Okay, now let's go do what we've got to go do. Can I tell you something, folks? When you, when you decide to actually change, when you decide to actually become a more peaceful, quiet calm, reserved individual, the people around you are not going to know what to do. You are going to freak them out when you decide to take the time. I'll guarantee you when you decide to take the time to breathe just a little bit, when you take the time to be with Jesus just a little bit, I will guarantee that every kid in the house will have a problem at that moment. Am I right? I can guarantee you that your spouse will be jealous of your time with Jesus. It will happen. People will not know what to do. Because everybody thinks that you ought to be doing something else. Anybody feel like that? That everybody thinks that you ought to be doing something else? Let me help you. You were placed here on planet earth first and foremost for one reason to have a relationship with a God who loves you nothing more nothing less that means you spend some time with him first you don't get mad at yourself you don't get angry at yourself when you don't get it done every day. I know what some of you are doing right now. Some of you type AAA personalities. You're sitting in here and you're saying, okay, I uh, hear it loud and clear. That's exactly what needs to happen. He said it. My calendar needs to change. And so I'm going to go ahead and put Jesus on my calendar every day of this next year, and I'm not going to miss it. 
And then you're going to go for it, and you're going to hit about Friday of next week, and something's going to happen, and you're not going to get the time with Jesus that you put on your calendar. You're going to start to think that you're an absolute failure, that God doesn't love you. All of your love and your joy and peace that you've been pouring in is going to disappear, and then you're just going to stop. Folks, did you hear what I said? The reason why God put you on planet Earth was to have a relationship with you. This is a relationship. This is not something you put on a calendar. This is walking and talking and being with him. Here's the reality. I don't get to spend as much time with my wife every single day as I would like to spend. And for that, she is very thankful. <laughs> I don't get to spend as much. There's days, there's some days when we don't even get to like see or talk to each other at all. And you know what? That's okay. It doesn't end the relationship. The relationship doesn't go bye-bye. It just means that we're going to work to try to make up for it at some point it's a relationship it's getting in there and and having the time of just sitting and just being with him and letting him pour his life into you here's the facts folks this stuff is simple you're like this is uh, this is what you've got for me today pastor you didn't like, did you study this week did, did you take a look Jesus came to make it simple. We want everything to be so complicated. That's why we love conspiracy theories. Huh? We do. We love conspiracy theories because we like to think that there's got to be some other reason why it happened. There's got to be somebody else behind this. We want complicated. Jesus didn't come to make it complicated. He came to make it simple. This is about relationship with him. This is about you spending time with him. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Your life just got easy, didn't it? That's all that it's got to be about. That's all that Jesus wants from you. I spent a lot of years of my life thinking he wanted so much more. Thinking that maybe the reason why he had put me on the planet earth is to save the world. That maybe Jesus didn't do a good enough job. And that he was going to put John on earth. And John to go preach the gospel and change the world. Go for it. See everybody saved. It'll be an amazing invitation. And I just went, 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 and go, 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 go. And try to make it happen. And then I went to this marriage conference. And I'm sitting in this marriage conference, and this marriage conference came up not too long after I had looked at my wife and had told her, listen, sweetheart, I recognize that I'm an alcoholic. But I'm a pastor, and tell me how to get off this train. And so we go to this marriage conference, and there's this counselor that's at this marriage conference. And, man, he is, he's like really, really crazy smart science and the Bible, and he's sharing all these different things with us about how to relax and how to, like, you know, calm down and just, just, be, just be in life and not really have to do. And I'll be honest with you, I'm sitting at this marriage conference, and I'm thinking, I really like this guy, but at the same time, this guy is nuts. If everybody listens to this guy, there is no way the world is getting saved. I mean, who's going to do the job? Who's going to get it done if everybody does with this guy? I didn't get it. It wasn't making any sense to me, but I was trying to understand. And then on day number two, we got up and literally we got in this circle with a, a bunch of pastors and our wives and we started doing these breathing exercises. Folks, this is something like straight out of like a Will Ferrell movie is what it felt like. Like, here we are breathing these exercises. And I'm like, we have completely flipped out. We have, we have lost it. I mean, if you're telling me that, like, this is what it is, no, thank you. And I left that conference saying, interesting, but not for me. I got a world to save. Fast forward almost eight years, and I'm sitting in that counselor's office <laughs> after having been through rehab, after having been through multiple counselors, after going through multiple 12-step meetings, and I'm sitting in his office, and we, the day had finally come where he was breaking up with me. He was looking at me and saying, hey, listen, John, I don't feel like I need to see you anymore. 
unless something comes up and then you can come see me. And I, I was kind of having a moment at that, 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 that spot. I don't remember the music playing, but maybe it was. Uh, I was kind of having a moment and like, please don't break up with me. I like you so much. And he was like, no, John, don't come back. But he said, here's the thing. He said, John, he said, I'm just happy to see that there's a pastor that's starting to like totally understand this necessity of helping people to be still. And he said, I cannot wait. I can't wait to see what happens when this simple message of Jesus makes it into the life of a church. And all of the craziness that is our lives, when this simple message makes it into the life of a church, what it's going to do. When people realize that they don't have to, in this new year, be anything amazing. They don't have to conquer the world. They don't have to please anybody. All they've got to do is just to get up and to be with Jesus, what that will do to the life of a church. So, folks, as that pastor who kind of like learned that lesson the hard way, I'll just tell you, all I can do today is say, I know it's not complicated. I know it sounds really too simple to be true. But I dare you, I dare you in 2019 to try it. And see if you don't walk away from this coming year with more love, more joy, and more peace in your life than you've ever had the opportunity to enjoy. Thanks so much for watching today's message. If Severn Run is having an impact on your life, we'd love for you to consider financially supporting the work we do here. There's two ways to do it, and it's super easy. The first one is to go to severnrun.com give, and the second is to text the dollar amount you wish to give to 410-844-GIVE. You can also spread this message even further by sending it to your friends and your family. And we'd love to see you right here on our campus one day. We always say we want to love well, live Jesus, and believe big every Sunday when we go out of here. So we hope that you get the chance to do that this week. Have a great week.